the Marvel Comics X-Men Showcase at South by Southwest with uh, C.B. Sabolsky and Jed McKay and Tom Brevort and Gail Simone is over. And we have our first hard, fast details about the X-Men reboot. While there are some certain aspects of the details that we do know that I think are very, very encouraging and very strong, I think for the most part this thing is probably fucked, man. You know, hey, maybe I'm just a little bit too cynical these days, but I can just see a lot of holes to poke into all this stuff. And I'm going to go through my general feelings just really quick because we are going to have another discussion a more in depth with Doc, obviously, on Sunday on the channel. He is the X Men aficionado, but Doc also has a real job, believe it or not. And I can't really get him on during the week. So I will go over the details that we have. Marvel Comics has let it out of the bag. They will be launching X Men this July with three main ongoing titles, but that's not all. Six more titles are on the way after that. The first three titles will be X Men by Jed McKay and Ryan Stegman launching July 10. They will be followed by Uncanny X-Men by Gail Simone and David Marquez, launching on August 10th. Finally, Exceptional X-Men by Eve Ewing and Carmen Carnero will launch on September 4th. While I personally think that having three flagship titles for X-Men means you have zero flagship titles for X-Men, certainly the Jed McKay X-Men title is going to be like the bigger one there. And the big thing that I can take away that I can say is really strong about that is you have really good artists. Ryan Stegman on the main X-Men book. Yes, thank you very much. I'll take that all day, every day. David Marquez coming back to an ongoing series, hopefully, in Uncanny X-Men. I think that's a good choice. Although, David Marquez hasn't done a lot of ongoing work lately, especially with Brian Michael Bennis when he was at DC Comics. He would come in for story arcs and then kind of vacate. So I don't know that Marquez is going to be along for the long haul. And in fact, I've actually been told Gail Simone is not really signed up for the long haul either. And then finally, Carmen Carnero on Exceptional X-Men is an interesting choice. I used to think that Carmen Carnero probably wasn't ready to be at Marvel Comics, especially when she was doing that ongoing, long-running time on, I believe it was Captain Marvel. And then they called her a Stormbreaker, one of the exceptional new Marvel artists, even though she'd been working for the company for over five years. But Carmen Carnero has gotten much better as of late this week. She did have the ASM issue that she illustrated, and it's pretty darn good. The, the story sucks. The premise of the book sucks, but the illustration itself is done very high quality. So we have talented artists on all three flagship X-Men books. Clearly, the Jed McKay book is supposed to be the big one. We have a general premise of what the state of the X-Men are going to be following the Fall of Krakoa and Fall of X and all this stuff that we're reading right now from Tom Revort at South by Southwest. The X-Men are fractured in the aftermath of the end of Krakoa, scattered across the globe without a central base of operation. What that means in practice is that all three titles carrying the name X-Men are core X-Men series. They all center around one of the major aspects of what the team has been about at different points. This is very much by design. We want to field a wide assortment of X titles with different styles and tones and approaches, an X-Men book for virtually any taste. So the state of the X-Men and the fact that they're underground and they're more hated than ever and scattered to the wind has certainly served X-Men titles and X-Men lore in the past and done a very good job and it's very effective storytelling. So I do think in the aftermath of whatever happens at the end of Krakoa, them kind of going off on their own paths is probably a pretty good idea. You can kind of tell the Eve Ewing book is going to be like teaching the next generation of X-Men. The X-Men in Alaska or the X-Men title from Jed McKay, I guess, is going to be more like the X-Men underground and hiding out. Whereas I believe Uncanny X-Men, which I guess is going to be in New Orleans, is going to be like the, the team that's kind of the face of the X-Men or whatever. There's some good things about that. There's some promising details. But when you hear that we want to make an X-Men book for everybody, when you try to make something for everybody, it ends up being for nobody. It is supposed to be a line of comic books that hopefully if you enjoy one, you'll enjoy the other and you want the full breadth of the entire scope of whatever story they're telling. Obviously, with nine titles, that's going to be very, very difficult. And that's really the biggest problem with all of this is they went way too big. There's way too many titles. They should have kept it to four titles max, probably for the first 12 months. You know, X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, Wolverine, maybe an X-Factor book, something like that. Maybe a mini series or two in there. And then maybe you come back with exceptional X-Men if things are going really well. And you throw in an X-Force team and kind of build it out that way. Instead of just assuming that the demand is going to be there for this new generation or this new reboot of X-Men, because I do think a lot of people have been very turned off by the Krakoan era, and you don't want to overwhelm them with a bunch of bad ideas all happening at the same time, 
because you want to deliver X-Men to everybody without any true focus on what you actually want to do with the entire universe. So I do appreciate the idea or the concept that they're using here, but it sounds like the execution is probably what's going to be off with this. Jed McKay and Ryan Stegman lead X-Men. The tagline for the book is Krakoa is no more. From their new base in Alaska, the X-Men raise a flag of defiance, join Cyclops, Beast, Magneto, Psylocke, Kid Omega, Temper, Magic, and Juggernaut as they assemble against new forces battling for the destiny and philosophy of the mutant species. Mutant business is their business. This is the X-Men book that wasn't hinted at or obviously mentioned within Women of Marvel because it's not going to be led by a female character. It appears like it's going to be led by Cyclops. Going to Alaska makes sense. You know, that is where Scott was born. He certainly had a lot of adventures there. Jed McKay is okay. His Moon Knight book is probably the best thing that he's ever done, but he's also the guy that did the Taskmaster miniseries. He's also the guy that was doing Black Cat. You know, if you're reading his Doctor Strange, is it good? Is that what you want to say? I can't say it's good. It's kind of, it's there. You know, and it's not awful, but it's not great. His Avengers book has had some intriguing things about it, but I don't like the Twilight Court. I don't like the Ashen Combine and this new sentient city that's supposed to be the headquarters of the Avengers whatever. Him writing the Avengers and the X-Men, I think, is an enormous mistake. Way too much on this man's plate. And now he's going to be doing Blood Hunt where he's launching out and headlining a 60-issue event series at the same time that he's also relaunching the flagship X-Men book. Seems like a lot on the plate of somebody that has essentially accomplished nothing at Marvel Comics or really in comic books, but I guess he must be really reliable and easy to work with. And he is potentially the best of what they have left. He's not Jonathan Hickman. Hickman's still a better writer. I would say Philip Kennedy Johnson is a better writer, but he's not a Marvel guy. He also works at DC Comics. You know, is he better than than Chip Zdarsky? I would say right now he's better than Chip Zdarsky. Is he better than Chip Zdarsky was four years ago? Probably not. The, the team is interesting, if underwhelming. Cyclops, yes. Beast, don't know that I'm interested in that character at this moment. Magneto, he's a villain. Why is he on the team? Psylocke, which Psylocke is it going to be? Is it going to be the Betsy Braddock real Psylocke, or is this still the Psylocke that's uh, been split apart? Kid Omega, who cares? Temper, who cares? Magic, cool character. Juggernaut, not a hero. So another problem that we had during Krakoa, they turned all the villains into good guys, and basically there were no villains left for the X-Men to fight, I guess, except for Orcus and a couple of versions of Mr. Sinister. And I think they're making a, a big mistake not turning these bad characters, these villainous characters back, uh, in my opinion. But we shall see. That's certainly going to be the headline book. I was told that Jed McKay was going to be writing the headline book. And it sounds like he's going to be on it for the long haul. I hope we don't get ABX2 out of this because Jed McKay absolutely loves, 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 loves. He's in love with the idea of crossing over characters that he's writing at the same time to do something to where I guess he doesn't have to think as hard about multiple story elements or storylines. So they're just like, yeah, I'll go combine them all and I have to do less work. At least that's just the way it feels to me as a comic book uh, reviewer or whatever. Gail Simone and David Marquez are on Uncanny X-Men. The tagline is Outlaw Heroes Once Again. The X-Men embark on a new mission. Making themselves at home in the big, easy New Orleans, the X-Men protect a world that hates and fears them. Join Rogue, Gambit, Nightcrawler, Jubilee, and Wolverine on explosive superhero adventures. Uncanny as ever. The X-Men are back to saving the day mutant style. So it's going to be more like a classic X-Men flavor, but it does have more of a classic X-Men team. You know, Rogue is going to be the leader. Gamut is her husband. He'll be right by her side. Nightcrawler, Jubilee, Wolverine. I like all those characters. That seems like a really good team. You know, if Jed McKay is supposed to be the headline writer, I would put him on this team personally. Uh, but David Marquez is a cool artist, and, you know, it's it's got some potential. I got no problems with New Orleans or anything like that. But, you know, we got to be honest with ourselves with Gail Simone. You know, when's the last time she did anything good? Actually, you know, let's trump that. When's the last time she did really anything competent? Like she hasn't had an ongoing series from either of the big two in a very long time, hasn't been successful or really relevant to the conversation when it comes to creating storylines or creating characters or creating uh, superhero stories and stuff like that. But the good news is Gail Simone was relevant. She was a big name and she certainly has written 
better comic books than Jed McKay probably ever has in his life. You know, Gail Simone on her best day has probably written a better story than what Moon Knight is. And Moon Knight's a pretty darn good story. It's just been a long time since we've seen that. But I do like the team. Rogue, Gambit, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Jubilee. You know, all characters that I really like. And I think a lot of X-Men fans really like those characters. So that one should probably be the easiest one to really make work. I do like that they're bringing back the uncanny name. Hopefully it's not a swerve like it was last time where they just brought it back so they could go into Age of X-Men. And then Rosenberg does a pretty solid job for seven issues, but they knew they were rebooting it anyway. Uh, and that one kind of pissed me off. Did that piss you off? <laughs> I did not like that. We'll see on that one. I think that's the one that really has the most potential. You know, X-Men has a better writer probably currently, certainly has a better artist, but they've got the better team and probably the better setup for a successful X-Men comic book series. The final one, Eve Ewing and Carmen Carnero launch exceptional X-Men. The tagline, Mutant Kind's two greatest teachers mold the next generation of X-Men. Kate Pride has returned home to Chicago following the war with Orcus. Having stepped away from the world of mutantdom, she is nevertheless called back into action as she crosses paths with a trio of new young mutants, Bronze, Axo, and Melee, who clearly need training and guidance. Unfortunately for Kate, Emma Frost thinks so as well. I know they're saying this is a core X-Men title and it's ongoing, but the chances this thing ever sees the light of day of 13 issues is beyond minuscule. This thing has no staying power. It's not just because Eve Ewing hasn't been successful at Marvel Comics. She's had a couple of ongoings. They never last. And she's currently on Black Panther, and it was canceled very, very quickly. You know, I thought Eve Ewing probably had a chance or a future within Marvel Comics. You know, she did make Ironheart better than anyone else had done to that point. But after that, she's basically fallen on her face. So not a good writer. Unfortunately, I thought she had potential. It hasn't happened. If you want to launch the next generation of X-Men heroes, the young X-Men, your new mutants, your Gen X or whatever like that, they never, ever take immediately. Almost never. Maybe a character here or there. But for the most part, X-Men fans are gravitating towards the longstanding heroes like your Wolverines and your Cyclops and all those kind of characters. So it takes a lot of craft, a lot of skill put into the characters to really flesh them out and make them mean something. And it takes a tremendous amount of patience on the part of Marvel Comics for any of these things to ever succeed. What is the one thing Marvel Comics do not have and haven't had for 10 years? No patience whatsoever. There's no way that they'll ever give Eve Ewing the runway to make this work long-term. These characters won't get over. We've seen the designs. And they're stupid. In fact, they're kind of offensive. There's like a giant woman in there. Clearly, well, I imagine they're trans. Like, that's the only way to take it. Uh, there's an Asian female in there. Of course, she's fucking pigeon-toed and stuff like that. And I think they're overestimating or valuing the Emma frost Kitty pride relationship and calling her Kate probably isn't a good move either. I don't think anyone considers Emma Frost to be one of the two greatest teachers in X-Men history I don't think anyone considers Kitty Pride to be one of the two greatest teachers in X-Men history, but that's like the baseline or the foundation of the series itself. It's right there in the fucking tagline. So I think this is ill-conceived, no shot of being a core title, no shot of being ongoing. This thing gets canceled very fucking quickly because it's got no legs before you even start. I understand you want to take chances, and this is why you don't launch with nine books. You launch with four that you know are going to work, and then you flesh it out. You don't launch it with bullshit titles that nobody is going to want to come in on. People are already hesitant to come back to X-Men. And then they see this shit like uh, Exceptional X-Men. And they're like, ah, nah, I don't think so. The lady that they hired because she had the right haircut, not exactly my cup of tea here. Now, as far as the other titles, there will be six new books yet to be given release dates or creative teams. Those include Storm, Phoenix, X-Force, Wolverine, Nyx, and X-Factor. Uh, we already know Greg Capullo is drawing Wolverine, so it's just a matter of who is writing it. The last rumors that I saw regarding the writer of Wolverine to be working with Capullo from Rich Johnston over on Bleeding Cool was Saladin Ahmed. Uh, that doesn't sound right. I can't believe anybody, not even Tom Brevoort, would be stupid enough to waste Greg Capullo on a fucking Saladin Ahmed story. He's not a seller. He's not a draw. He's just a guy that can fill a spot for a while, but he doesn't do anything exciting. He certainly doesn't move the needle. Greg fucking Capullo moves the needle. You've got to have the right writer with him. So hopefully that is not uh, true. We also know 
Chris Cantwell should be in there somewhere. You know, hopefully not on Wolverine. I don't know where I'd want Chris Cantwell. Probably X Factor. I certainly wouldn't want him on an action pack book like X Force. Certainly not Wolverine. Nix would certainly fit Christopher Cantwright Wells' abilities. That's a series that also has no staying power whatsoever. You imagine because Storm is a black female character, it has to be a black female writer. Who's going to be that one? Phoenix obviously has to be a female writer because it's a female character. I would imagine maybe Celeste Bromfman. It seems like they want her to do some things at Marvel Comics these days. If they fill this with all the terrible writers that are plaguing Marvel Comics these days and it's just a shell game, now we're just going to move all the really shitty writers that are on Avengers characters over into X-Men and now we'll move all the bad X-Men writers over onto Avengers characters. You know this thing is probably going to be DOA anyway uh, because you need good creative on this. Greg Capullo on Wolverine, yes, please, thank you very much. You've got to have a good writer on that book. This is way too many extra series and, and some, just some stupid ones. Nick's homeless fucking you know, mutants. Is that really a story that we need to tell? They tried it before and it did not work. You know, X-Force is always a good title. I'm tired of Jean Grey being the fucking Phoenix. Jean Grey, Marvel Girl, is way cooler than fucking Phoenix. You know, I understand Dark Phoenix is the biggest story perhaps in X-Men history, and she was a big part of that. She was the Phoenix Force. Uh, but I think she's moved beyond that. I wish we could all move beyond Phoenix, unless that book maybe, I guess, would be Echo. And then if it's Echo, I mean, that thing's destined to just fucking fall on its face and fail. So some interesting stuff here. It should be good times. I can't wait to talk to Doc about it. Like I said, it'll be up on Sunday. And certainly we'll be talking about this on the Comics Aficionados. If you'd like more comic book coverage and reviews and all that kind of stuff, I do want to invite you to come check out the Patreon. There's a link in the video description. We've got podcasts talking about all this stuff all week long, reviewing comic books, talking about the comic book news, pop culture news. We're currently doing read-throughs of Miller World as well as Planetary and lots of fun stuff going on over there. Definitely check that out as well.